So I hope that you see the slides in a full view. I see them in a full view, so I suppose that it's okay. So as Stephanie already introduced me, I will not bother you with the, the information again, you know, my name and where I work. I just repeat that I'm from the Czech uh, Social Science Data Archive. And uh, my presentation uh, will be about the data management expert guide. That's something you might have already heard of, but in case you didn't, I will tell you something about it. Uh, I will focus on the data management as I'm, I'm a researcher in, uh, in, in the Czech archive, but I'm, I'm also uh, something that could be called as data management specialist. So I will be uh, speaking mostly about the data management and I will in particular talk about two chapters we have in the DMAG. And these chapters are uh, about uh, data documentation and about processing of data. So uh, data management expert guide or DMAG, how we call it uh, shortly, is kind of a very practical tool for everyone who just wants to find their way in the, in the domain of data management. Uh, we developed it in the CESDA in the so-called training group. We've been working on it last four years. We were developing it constantly. And uh, it was designed uh, for social researchers and for everyone who wants to work with social scientific data, no matter whether they work with quantitative data or qualitative data. And we think that DMAC can actually answer many questions that researchers may have uh, when they work with social, social science data. And uh, we think that this DMAC, this guide, can help uh, to learn basic and intermediate, intermediate uh, skills of data management. Uh, the DMAC can be uh, viewed online on the website. There is a link on, on the slide. And you can also download it as a PDF. So you can have it in your computer or whatever. You can use it uh, wherever uh, you want. Uh, the DMAC is organized along something we call a data life cycle. Uh, it's... Uh, it's the data life cycle from the perspective of the data management. There are seven points in the data life cycle as there are seven chapters in the data management expert guide. Uh, the even individual chapters of the DMAC uh, represent uh, the seven issues, seven points in the data life cycle. And these are plan, organize and document, process, store, protect, publish and discover, I know, meaning discover, discovering the data. Uh, my presentation, uh, as I've already just said, uh, it, it would be about uh, the, the two points, the two chapters. The first one is called organize and document. And the uh, second one is called process. Uh, before I start to speak about the two, uh, two chapters, I want to stress uh, one thing that is called data management plan. Uh, because uh, throughout the whole DMAG, you find in every chapter uh, the, the information about data management plan we keep to suggest to, to researchers that they you should use something called data management uh, plan because it's something very useful and we can say that it's necessary for researchers and other people who work with uh, social scientific data uh, because it's absolutely necessary to have your data management under control. And the data management plan is something that really helps you to, to make your data management uh, under, of co uh, under control because it's basically a plan of the whole research project from the perspective of data management. So in every uh, DMAC chapter, at the end uh, of the every chapter, uh, you find uh, DMP questions, the questions related to your data management plan, the data management plan that's uh, related to your research project. 
And these DMP questions are basically like very small exercises that directly ask you what you should put into your data management plan at that exact stage of the data life cycle. So, for example, you go through the chapter two, which is called organize and document, and you learn about uh, something that's called metadata standards. So, we hope, we suppose that you understood what the metadata is and what the metadata standards are. And in the DMP questions, you are asked which me metadata standard would you use in your data management plan and why would you use that? So that's just a very basic, uh, basic uh, explanation of uh, the data management plan and why uh, we push to the researchers to use it. Uh, let's go to the content of the two chapters I'm going to present today. Uh, first, we talk about the chapter two, uh, which is called Organize and Document. Uh, the information that is presented in this, in this chapter uh, should help researchers to keep uh, their data in order. And it should help them to work with appropriate data documentation. Maybe it sounds boring, but in a real research practice, you, you find out very quickly that it's a basic thing to have your data in order and have your documentation in order. So this whole chapter is about this, that you really need it, and how you uh, should do it. Uh, the documentation and metadata is explained from the perspective of quantitative and also qualitative uh, researchers. And uh, it basically answers a very, very easy or very basic question, which is how to organize data and metadata. Uh, in the chapter, we wanted to show you how to appropriately structure folders and your data sets uh, so that you have all your data in perfect order. Uh, we wanted you to learn how to organize and name variables in the data sets. So it, it's all about having your things in order and having all the information about the data documentation because the large uh, part of the of this chapter is about the importance of documentation and the metadata not only having things in order but also the documentation of the data is very important it's important for you as a researcher but it's also important for other people who join the research project because they need to get information about what's happening very quickly and it's also important for people who will use your data later because we want people to share their data with the, with the research community and if you share your data you cannot share just the numbers in the you know SPSS or Stata you must share the information about uh, your data so that's the documentation and metadata about the data the data that's why they are so important. Uh, without the proper uh, documentation, they, the data are not meaningful. And uh, they are not meaningful and their quality is unknown. Uh, so in the chapter, we stressed this importance and we want to show uh, readers or researchers how to produce uh, data documentation and metadata. And uh, we also shared some information about something called metadata standards because it's widely used in data archives. Uh, the third chapter is called process. So you see that it's something about the processing of the data. And uh, in the chapter, we describe the most important operations that researchers should do with their data before they start the analysis of the data. So it's all the changes, all the adjustments, all the all the thing, all the processing that happens in the data before we actually start working with them or before we share them with uh, with the research community. 
uh, that chapter contains explication of several very important issues, for example, coding data, transcription of data from interviews, the qualitative research, many other important issues that are related to the processing of the data and uh, throughout the chapter there are many examples of data processing uh, as there are these issues that are covered in this in this chapter there are so many of them so i will mention only some of them uh, for example if you read the chapter you will uh, learn basics about transcription of qualitative data and also the quantitative data you will learn about the protection of respondents about anonymization of data uh, there's a large part of the chapter that's dedicated to coding of survey data uh, there's also something about coding of the qualitative data data from interviews and lots of other other examples of processing of data. There's also a small subchapter about survey weights, and there are the, the basic and necessary most important information about the survey weights, because it's something people, researchers who work with survey data are not always sure about the, the usage of weights and what they actually mean. So there's, there's something about survey weights. Uh, the last thing that I would like to say that at the end of each uh, chapter, you can find a list of further reading. So for every, every issue uh, you read about, you can find information about further resources uh, and you can broaden your knowledge about a particular uh, issue. So, uh, from uh, my part, it's it's all. If there are any any questions related, we can talk about it later, I suppose. So thank you very much for listening to me. I will stop sharing immediately. Wait a second. So I'm done. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot, Johanna. I think it was really interesting, uh, especially the process uh, of the data that you that you've collected, and then uh, the documentation, so that. We can see that, for example, uh, Professor Konstantina Sakarakis uh, could be able to reuse your data. Uh, and the next uh, speaker will also talk about what it is, how uh, about barriers and, uh, and accelerators to share to reusing uh, data.